Well, hello to all of you, and I'm so glad you're back to join us to explore another idea or two. I would like to continue a bit from our time last week where we discussed the ineffectiveness of defenses. Not only their ineffectiveness, but the fact that they backfire on us. We also indicated that you cannot assess the validity or the accuracy of a system while you're within it. We need to be outside it to look back and to be able to have a more accurate view. Well, the worldview that we live in is, as a whole, too small. It tends to be fear-driven. It tends to be about dividing everybody into the victims and villains, and unfortunately to presume that there are, in fact, a lot of villains in the world. So we're asked to completely rethink that and to broaden our perspective. And that's the purpose, both of A Course in Miracles and of our See How Life Works series, to try to broaden that perspective, shed light on what's really going on. One of the main things that has contributed to the fact that we turn other people into adversaries or our enemies or not being like us is because we see things differently. Well, the world is not experienced in one objective way. Everyone experiences their world and their lives differently and subjectively. And the reason why that occurs is we have sensory input being processed by the brain, and the brain is a pattern-seeking organ. What that means is, is that we all have a great deal of conditioning and programming for our earliest days, and that's led us to believe certain things, be afraid of certain things, be certain of certain things. And when data comes in that doesn't match that, the brain tends to let it fall through the perceptual cracks. It's like there's not any container for that from my programming and from my conditioning. For instance, people could be very, very nice to you. And if you believe that people aren't nice to you and that all they are is problematic, on the occasions when they are nice to you, it will not register. You won't even see it. You won't know it's there. And so you will assert that you are right, that everybody is really out to get you. And nothing will persuade you from that because that will be the only experience that makes itself known to you. I had an interesting example of that a long time ago. I often refer to things a long time ago because when you've lived a long time, you've had lots of experiences over those years. And in my very earliest learning days, we took a trip to Tahiti with another couple. And when we landed at the airport, we noticed, because it's a very small airport, that there were two other couples traveling together. And we kept noticing these same two other couples wherever we were, whether we were in a hotel in Bora Bora or on the beach, wherever we were, we would see these people. And lo and behold, when it was time to come back, there they were. They were on the same flight out that we were, and we couldn't help but hear them recount their experience. They said, this was a really crummy vacation. The people weren't nice, they were not helpful, the food wasn't good, and it rained all the time. And the four of us just nearly stood there speechless because nothing could have been further from our experience. We thought the food was unlike anything we'd ever tasted. It was so good. People could not have been more cooperative. And occasionally there was a little rain shower that might have lasted a few minutes. But for the most part, the sun was out. So how their perspective was it rained all the time was beyond me at the time, except I couldn't help but think, wow, there's something very interesting going on here. We're all in the same place, but our experience of it is wildly different. You can see how the confusion begins when all of us are seeing only what's consistent with our programming and not a broader, more objective perspective. 
So I hope that we can all challenge ourselves to say, but I need to broaden it. I need to believe there are a lot of possibilities beyond what I might have experienced up to this point. I want to open my mind to the fact that it's safe for me to see things differently. It's safe for me to regard people in situations in a more loving and hopeful and open way. Openness is the key. Openness to being taught, not I already know everything. We are asked to be pioneers. When you look at how the world is mostly living at a fearful, I'm a victim of something or someone else mentality, to go forth into this territory, so to speak, and decide to do something differently, to decide, you know what? I don't have any guarantees of what's going to happen, but I'm going to try it out. I'm going to decide that I can be open to all my experience, that it's safe. I'm going to presume the best about other people and see what happens. And so to support both the fact that this is going to have a happy ending and to encourage us all, I want to tell you a little story. This is a greatly abbreviated version of a very long and fascinating story. One of my ancestors I particularly admire. His name is Pierre Laclede. He was born in what is now the country of France in 1729. And at that time, the practice of primogeniture was still in force, which meant that the first son in every family got everything and none of the other children got anything. In other words, that was to keep, obviously, land and other possessions intact instead of being divided into smaller and smaller pieces. So women were married off. Other younger men would go into the army or the church. What else was there to do when you had no other resources? Well, this particular great-great-great-great-grandfather decided when he was very young, knowing the situation, that he would go to the New World. This is long before there was a United States. There were a few little English colonies, but there was no country yet. But he would come to what is now the United States, the New World, and found a city. This is a really big dream under the circumstances. First of all, you have to get yourself across the Atlantic Ocean. Now we just hop on a plane and fly over. Then you had to come over on those dinky little sailing ships, and that in itself was a quite an adventure. He came to New Orleans, which was the only French-speaking place he could come to, met people, established his business, did well. He and his partner were then given the fur trading rights to everything west of the Mississippi River that didn't belong to Mexico, whatever that was, nobody knew. They just knew there's a big bunch of land there, but there were no maps. So who knew? So this man would ride horseback from New Orleans up and down the banks of the Mississippi River looking for the perfect place to establish his outpost for trading with the Indians. And the place that met all his criteria, what is now the city of St. Louis. So he, was, he did indeed found his city. Many other amazing things I don't have time to tell you about. But germane to our story is that this man recognized the power and the value of befriending everybody, including the Indian tribes. After all, he's going to be trading with the Indian tribes. Now, he was not given any guarantee. It's not like all these Indians were informed ahead of time that this fellow is coming, but he trusted in being open, in reaching out, in following his guidance. It was only time in the history of the United States where there was a cordial and respectful relationship between the white settlers and the Indian tribes. The man was a relationship genius. When, unbeknownst to everybody, because there was no way of communicating this, all of that land was transferred from France to Spain. And one day, up comes the Spanish envoy who says, this is now all our territory. And instead of fighting, resisting, objecting, Pierre Laclede says, great, 
He invites the man into his house. He introduces him to everybody. He treats him very kindly, very appropriately, and so charms the envoy that he continues to run his city like a French city as he always did before. (laughs) So one friendly response to situations after another served him enormously as he moved forward in that great open pioneering spirit spirit geographically. And we're invited to do the same thing in psychological territory. The world itself is pretty much explored, but we have not yet made inroads into exploring and expanding and updating our psychological world. And we're asked to do the same thing. Open up be adventurous. See what happens when you decide to see the best in everyone instead of cowering in fear before them and closing down and living a small, fearful, victimized life. We deserve so much better. We can have so much better. Nobody keeps anything from us except ourselves. Because remember, when I'm living from that fearful, insulated, defended position, I'm keeping my energy frequency down. And then I will selectively see things. Selectively see is the key to things that I don't like seeing. It becomes an unhappy, small, limited world. But I could clear the fog out of my mind and see something differently and recognize opportunities and friendship possibilities that have always been there. To give you one last metaphor for that, when I first went to work for IBM back in the olden days and the early part of my career, when one first went to work for them, you were shipped off to basic training, so to speak, for two months, and our training happened in Seattle, Washington. And you may or may not know that in Seattle, in the fall, the weather is gray and drizzly and foggy and wet. It was that way when we arrived, and it remained that way for about the first five weeks we were there. Then, the third week in November, the sun came out for the first time. I looked out the window that morning, and there, to my utter astonishment, was Mount Rainier. Now, I theoretically knew Mount Rainier was in the Seattle area, But I had no idea that it looks like it grows right out of the middle of downtown. It is so close and so gorgeous and so huge. And most importantly, it had been there the whole time. I couldn't possibly have known that. You couldn't see it. You couldn't see it because of the fog. And we can't see all that's here for us because of the fog in our minds. And so we're asked to be pioneers in clearing that fog, deciding to open up, deciding to be courageous, deciding to reach out to the best in everything and everyone, up the frequency of our energy field, notice how differently our lives can unfold. And each one of us is called to do that one at a time. But as each of us do that, we open the way for others to follow. We, in a sense, prove that it's safe to do and much better than living a little, small, defended life. Thank you for listening. We'll talk about some more things next week. Bye.